Hey guys, Lively here. We are back with a new Magnum Opus Let's Play. We just recently updated to version 7. I felt like it was a good time to do another long playthrough. I've kind of had the Fallout 4 itch for a while, and I haven't really been able to play, like, for real play. I've just been doing a lot of testing and stuff. But now that we're in a stable state, we're in full release, uh, this is going to mean we don't have any big updates planned. Nothing that is going to break saves, I hope. Uh, maybe just some minor bug fixes here and there as we find them but um hopefully this will be a long and slow playthrough i kind of want to do everything i possibly can do all the quests i can do all the mod added stuff and you know talk about the different systems and stuff that are in place and just have a good time and i hope you all do too so we're gonna go ahead and just start a new game Just to be clear, this is going to be a long and slow playthrough. I'm not going to be skipping any dialogue. We're going to listen to everything War anybody has to say. Uh, we'll probably listen to some holotapes and read some notes. If that interests you guys, uh, it's up to you. But first, we are greeted by this pop-up here from Fast Start. So I will explain these options really quickly. But disable tutorial quests would be the first time you activate a locked door or locked terminal. It's going to pop up a message notification telling you how to pick a lock or hack a terminal. So if you've played this game, you can disable that. The hammer markers, uh, they're for Preston Garvey's crew when they move into Sanctuary. They have a habit of hammering on the same spots in the same houses. So that can get kind of annoying, so you can disable those. Vault 111 Rad Roaches, pretty self-explanatory. The opening vault has some enemy Rad Roaches and you can just start with them dead so you don't have to worry about them. And the open Vault 111 doors is not for the large vault door, it's for the one in the Overseer's office. So if you just auto open that, you don't have to activate the terminal to open it. So we'll just do that. It's just a little bit faster. I am going to play as my classic, what well, if I can learn how to type, Slaughter Princess. I always choose names based on the list of Cogsworth's names that he can say. There's like 200 of them. I will leave a link in the description for you if that interests you. But uh, I tend to play a jack of all trades. So we're going to be pretty even here, but I do like my carry weight. I do like passing my speech checks. I like the perks and agility and luck a lot. You, something like that I think is fine. And we can always dump more points into these stats later, so it'll be fine. But I'm going to play as Nora. My turn, big guy. I do have a couple presets I made just for myself. There are no presets included in the mod list, so these are only on my end. But I made this one just so I can get through this pretty quickly. But the character creator is pretty deep. You are free to explore all the options. You can spend hours in here pretty easily. But now I'm going to transition into a different save so that we can watch the Vault 111 intro. Because I know a lot of people that watch my videos have not seen the intro. So if you want to skip that, I will leave a little link to where the video picks up. Thanks, Codsworth. Of course, Mom. So this is the vanilla intro. Uh, there are quite a few little activators where you can learn a little bit more about Nate and Nora here, like uh, our flag, for example. Good old U.S. of A. Which Nate got for his military service. There's our little Auto doctorate. Late nights. It was worth it. It's one of the only like two or three things that shows that Nora was a lawyer in the pre-war life. Thanks, buddy. I know we were nervous at first, but I'm glad we got Codsworth. Yeah, totally. A little comic book. Grognak the Barbarian and the Jungle of the Bat Babies. <laughs> uh, we can activate the cigarettes and liquor. Now who left those here? It's a little early to be drinking. But mostly, we are just waiting for Vault Tech Rep over there to make his way to the front door. Get a better view over here. But he starts at that neighbor's house, and after a minute, he walks over here. So you can't do anything until he rings the doorbell. Ugh, it's that salesman again. I don't know why he keeps bothering you. Good morning, Vault Tech calling. Good morning. Isn't it? 
Just look at that sky out there. <clears throat> you can't begin to know how happy I am to finally speak with you. I've been trying for days. It's a matter of utmost urgency, I assure you. What's so important? Why, nothing less than your entire future. If you haven't noticed, ma'am, this country has gone to heck in a handbasket. If you'll excuse my language, the big kaboom is... It's inevitable, I'm afraid. And coming sooner than you may think, if you catch my meaning. Now I know you're a busy woman, so I won't take up much of your time. Time being, um, <laughs> a precious commodity. I'm here today to tell you that because of your family service to our country, you have been pre-selected for entrance into the local vault. Vault 111. But I have a family. You can fit us all, right? Of course, of course. Minus your robot, naturally. In fact, you're already cleared for entrance. It's just a matter of verifying some information. Don't want there to be any holdups in the unforeseen event of <laughs> total atomic annihilation. <laughs> Won't take but a moment. Sure. Let's do it. Splendid! Splendid. Now, uh, <clears throat> let's see. Wonderful. That's everything. Uh, just gonna walk this over to the vault. Congratulations on being prepared for the future. Um, thanks again. Hey, it's peace of mind. That's worth a little paperwork, right? For you and Sean, no price is too high. <laughs> Good answer. Can I have my you should hear Codsworth call me by name here. Sean has been changed, but he absolutely refuses to call me now. I think he needs some of that maternal affection that you seem to be so good at. <laughs> Go ahead, honey. I'll be there in a second to help, okay? So he has a list of like 200 names or so that he can say, and Slaughter and Princess are both on that list, so he will call me Miss Princess. And fun little fact about this is that's actually an NPC just sitting at a desk in a totally blank cell. And that's just kind of viewing into that cell. So you can actually COC to where he is sitting and just watch him broadcast. Let's go see our baby. Oh, we can also activate this special book. I wonder what Sean will grow up to be. But a uh, fun fact for how this game works is these little triggers are called activators. And you can tie events to happen when you activate things. So, like, you know, opening a door could progress a quest or something like that. But activating your baby here triggers the end of the world. So, everything is fine, but as soon as I touch my baby, all the soldiers spawn outside and the end of the world starts. So as long as you my never boy, play with your child, any trouble, the world will never end. Hey, I fixed that mobile on his crib the other day. Why don't you give it a spin? That's my boy. On his best behavior, just like his dad. Well, most of the time, anyway. Listen, after breakfast, I was thinking we could head to the park for a bit. Weather should hold up. Oh, right. The park. With you. Because I want to get pregnant again. Sir? Mom? You should come and see this! Codsworth? What's wrong? Don't worry, he'll get the baby. Yes, followed by flashes, blinding flashes, sounds of explosions. We're uh, trying to get confirmation. I can see with lost what contact with our affiliate stations. Oh, no. We do, we do have, we do have coming in. That's um, confirmed reports. I repeat, confirmed reports of nuclear detonations in New York and Pennsylvania. My God. We need to get to the vault. Now! I've got Sean. Let's go. Residents right. of Sanctuary Hills. If you so fun registered. fact, if you deviate from the path at all, the bombs explode, you lose. Game over, you die. So if I run down that street, the world ends. Immediately. If I run into the forest a little bit, the world ends. Everything explodes, I die, game over. I just have to follow this path. Absurd! I am Vault Tech! 
you don't get in. I'm going in. You can't shoot me. Oh, 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 this dude's totally okay, gonna okay. destroy vault with his mini gun. We need to get in. We're on the list. Infant, adult male, adult female. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Good luck, you sir. Two, follow me. And Come on. What's assault. gonna happen to all those people outside We're doing the gate? Everything we can. Now keep moving. Step on the platform in the center. Okay. He's fine. We're gonna be okay. I love you. Oh my god! Hold on! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh We did it. We made it. We're okay. Everyone, please step off the elevator and proceed up the stairs in an orderly fashion. No need to worry, folks. We'll get everyone situated in your new home. Vault 111. A better future underground. So we just... Yes, up the stairs. I can't believe it. If we left a minute later... No, no. We don't Don't leave. get caught up thinking about that. You're safe now. Everyone, just head up these stairs and through the door there. So some of these names might look a little familiar to All veteran players. There are random encounters you can get throughout the game. One of them is a group of named ghouls, and they're actually all named after your neighbors. Just this Man, way. This one's good. So these guys live, the but your neighbors outside turn into ghouls, and you can fight them later. Just step over to the table. Oh, Welcome. Okay. Pick up a suit right Here over there. Here you are. Head down the hall there. Levels are good. Right over there, please. Thanks. What now? Just follow the doctor here. He'll show you where to go. All right, you three. Follow me. See? This is our new home. Take a vault seat oh, and head down the hall. Here. This is one of our most advanced facilities. Not that the others aren't great, mind you. It's gone. Our home. Everything we had. My mother and father down in DC. Oh God, honey. What if they didn't make it? How long do you I think we'll be down here? Oh, we'll be going but over all that in orientation. Just a few medical items we have to get through first. Right? The vault suit is designed to be fashionable as well as comfortable. Prepared for the future, right? Oh, Mr. Russell, get out of the way. It's not even your pod, is it? Oh, yeah, it is. Just place. step in here and put your vault suit on. It'll be okay. Mommy's right here. See? Honey, could you help me? Oh, sure. Who is my little guy? I'm not going far. I'll just be over there. Put on my vault suit. Get in the pod. Pod will decontaminate and depressurize you before we head deeper in the vault. Just relax. It's time for a whole new life. Resident secure. Occupant vitals normal. Procedure complete. In five, four. There's nothing you can do for this scene except pound on the door. <laughs> so you just have to wait. This is the one.
And here we are, back to our regular save again. So, on, if you watched the intro, on. hope you liked it. You learned a good oh, bit of backstory about our motivations and what happened. Uh, if you're just rejoining us after skipping it, then welcome. Welcome to Fallout 4. Welcome to Magnum Opus. And I'll get Sean back. I promise. <coughs> Not going to be a lot to do here since we chose all the options with the fast start on. So I'm just going to pick up some crap later. But all the rad roaches are dead. Uh, the doors will be open, so we just gotta run to the exit. I always want to take the meat so I can cook it, get some free experience. I also tend to collect hollow tapes, and this has a hollow tape here, so that's mine. And I also want to take pencils for a little Easter egg later, which I will show you, but that won't be for a little while. So this hollow tape on the ground here is from Sim Settlements. It's pretty long, and we can't actually play it right now because we don't have a Pip Boy. But if I played it now, it would involve me standing here and listening to it while the door opened. And there's another one over by the exit too. So these lockers over here always have the same stuff. This one's always got a bobby pin. This one's always got pencil and pre-war money. I mostly just want the bobby pin. Pick up our pit boy here. Now, as good a time as any to say that we use a mod called Pip Boy Flashlight, and it will not work until you open the vault door. I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. But this is also going to be the only time that we see the vanilla Pip Boy interface, which is the inventory list and stuff on our wrist, like this view right here, which is the vanilla behavior. So in the regular game, anytime you open your menus or the map or anything, you get this view of the Pip-Boy. And it's kind of small. It's based on your FOV. Uh, mine's a little big, so it makes everything a little small here. But from now on, when we open the Pip-Boy, we get the full screen Pip-Boy, which is much bigger and clearer and easier to read. And I uh, love it. But if we hold tab, you can see that flashlight icon on the right, but I don't have a flashlight. It's because you have to press that button right there. I don't even have to move. It's right there. So please just press it and your flashlight will work. That is the main reason that the README says to please not report bugs until leaving the vault. But you can see now my flashlight works just fine. Grab these bullets and watch the vault door sequence because this never gets old for me. I really enjoy it. So cool. So that cell in front of us is actually a different location than this one behind us, so we're gonna hit a little stutter when we cross this border here by the railings. And that's just us loading into the new area. If you've watched my previous videos or previous Let's Plays in Magnum Opus, you'll probably be hearing a lot of repeat information like that, and you're just gonna have to deal with it. But here we have the option to change our special, our name, our appearance. I'm fine with all the above, so we're just gonna leave. Head up to the world above ground. First thing we'll get is a pop up here for Beantown Interiors adding holotape. 
That can be ignored. We do not need to mess with that holotape in any way. We take a moment to enjoy the scenery, but the first thing we want to do is press escape to open our menu. Go to mod config, MCM settings manager, and we are going to apply the Opus V7 settings right there. It's going to seem like your computer's having a seizure for a second. You won't be able to control your mouse very well. As you can see, it's real jittery. When it's finished, it'll go back to being smooth. And all the options on the left are grayed out, so we just want to get back out of this menu. And that's it. Our MCMs are set up. So if you've played previous versions of this mod list, you might remember there were two quests as soon as you came out of the vault here. One was for Settlement Tidybot, which used to be back here. I removed that mod. There was nothing wrong with it. I just never used it, so I didn't see a point in keeping it for myself. And you gotta remember, I make this list for me, and you are just hopefully enjoying it as I do, but at the end of the day, this is me. And there was also the Beginner's Guide Terminal down in that trailer, which actually moved. I built my own little trailer and put it over here. And I removed the quest marker from it, so you can come and get your free three dollars. Place everywhere hotkeys note, and you can eject this tape or just read it right here. It's up to you. But I would always recommend taking the tape with you, just as a reference in case you need it. But with all that out of the way, we can get into the regular game and enjoy the lush beauty that is another pine forest overhaul and true grass. Like I said before, we are not going to skip any dialogue. I'm going to try my best not to talk over any, unless I have little comments to make about it. I do want to grab this magazine off this workbench really quickly. That'll just give us, obviously, it says it includes components to build your own radio recruitment beacon. That's just a kind of quick start for some Settlements 2 stuff. I will not be doing that here in Sanctuary. I'm going to actually do that down in Starlight Drive-In, mainly because that's where pretty much everybody in my Discord recommends that we do it. It's a weirdly spinning ball. I'm going to leave it alone. But uh, we'll do it in Starlight, mainly because this sanctuary here is part of the Triangle of Death, which you can read more about on Discord or from just Googling it. Or there's a section on the Sim Settlements wiki about it as well. But I'm going to talk to Cogsworth here and we'll get started with the main quest. Him. They stole my baby. It's worse than I thought. Mm. You're suffering from hunger induced paranoia. Not eating properly for 200 years will do that, I'm afraid. 200 years? What? Are you. A bit over 210, actually, Mum. Give or take a little for the Earth's rotation and some minor dings to the old chronometer. That means you're uh, two centuries late for dinner. <laughs> Perhaps I can whip you up a snack. You must be famished. So a couple options here. This is actually a speech check, which will skip him going to get us food, or we can allow him to get us some food. I usually go with this one just for the experience, and I'm pretty sure I did that on the last video. So let's do this one so he gives us some breakfast. What? Food? Yeah, sure. I... I meant to think. Then I'll be right back. 
Plus, it'll give us some time to explore our house in the post-war state. So we can grab some of those things that we saw in the intro. This magazine, it gives us some uh, bonuses to unarmed and melee attacks, which I'll probably never use. And our Your Special book, which will give us a free special point, which we can dump into anything we want. I think I will go Charisma, because again, I really like passing my speech checks. And I think I actually need six to pass the first speech check that I'm going to have later. are going to be a problem anymore. I have an idea. Let's search the neighborhood together. After all, Sir and young Sean, they're, they're my family too. All right. Lead the way. How to serve, Mum? So one thing I've noticed that somebody actually reported earlier this morning was sometimes the pistol here will say it does like one damage. If you just save and load the game, it'll fix itself. But it should say 28 here. I've only had it happen once. I haven't been able to reproduce it. But if it does happen, just save and load. Oh, it got past me. Hang on, Codsworth. I'll be right there. Got it. Wait. My senses are picking up movement in another house. Follow me. What's all this then? Got him. Didn't get him. Wow, I'm terrible. We'll just let Codsworth handle it. Come on, you can do it, buddy. Good boy. For your help, Codsworth. Good luck, Mum. You'll find young Sean. I know you will. I shall remain here and secure the home. Thanks, Codsworth. There's a couple things we can do here in Sanctuary. Just little loot related things. Uh, that pistol back there is either a 10mm, a pipe gun, uh, a defense gun, or a scrap gun. But either way, I'll pick it up just so I can get the ammo in case there's ammo in it. There is a duffel bag on the roof up here. Sometimes it has nothing, sometimes it has decent loot. Today we get average loot. And mainly I'm interested in the root cellar here. Which has this very nice FN57 pistol. Use the same ammo as our 10 mil, but it does a little bit more damage. So you can see it's 30 instead of 28. So I'm actually gonna put that on three, I put you on two, and I don't want you at all, honestly. Can't pick this yet because it's advanced. No way I can pick this. But I will honestly probably forget about it and we'll never be in the cell again. There's one more safe in town. I can never remember exactly which house is in. It's in one of those two. Yeah. 
This one's got a bomb on it though, so be careful. It just unlocks uh, a craftable thing. There's a bunch of them. And there's one more over here in the doorway. This garbage can always has two grenades in it and a possibility of some other junk items. And this guy over here has a semi-random outfit. Uh, in vanilla, it's always the drifter outfit. In this, I've been getting the old west coat a lot lately, but it looks like he has drifter today. So, vanilla outfit. It's actually better than what we're wearing. So we'll put that guy on. Now we can go meet, arguably, everyone's favorite companion. Hello, dog. Hey, boy. What are you doing out here all by yourself? You lose your owner, buddy? <laughs> okay, then. Let's stick together. There's a couple stim packs I can pick up here. There's another one in here. That's really all I'm interested in this place. Also, this little cave down here. I'll just use melee for. I don't want to waste all my ammo too early. Hello. This is kind of a joke about how they're throwing all this trash down in this cave instead of properly disposing of their waste. But that does bring me to my next question here, which is uh, how interested would you guys be in hearing holotapes and reading notes and all that kind of thing? Because I can always edit it out if you guys think it's too boring. Or I can leave them in if that kind of thing interests you. I'm going to do it either way. So if you have a preference one way or another, I would love to know about it. And uh, if you don't want to see that or hear that, I can just edit it. It's totally fine. It only takes a second. But let me know if you, if you feel any type of way about that. There's a lot of stuff I haven't heard or seen in years, if ever. So like I said, I want this to be a long run. And I just want to do everything and see everything. And if we do do, uh, ah, do do, if we do hollow tapes and notes and stuff, like, would you want me to read them out? Should I just leave them on screen for a minute? Like, just let me know what you guys want, and I can do whatever. Entering Concord here, we're about to get a taste of how different the combat is, and I don't have my impacts where I like them. But we use mods like True Damage and Scourge and Chemfluence now, which will influence how combat plays out a good bit. We should be a bit more tactical. We should do more damage, but we'll also take more damage. So every encounter could be pretty lethal. Okay, I hit his shoulder and not his head. Those shields are a real pain sometimes. If I shoot now, I just won't do damage. So we'll try to get around him. Oh, 
I'm already low on health, which is not great. And I should probably put my grenades on. Let's use one right now. Oh, he moved. There's also a bullet drop, so depending on the gun, you might want to aim a little higher sometimes. Oh, we also use VAFs now instead of VATS, which is, uh, instead of targeting assist, it's slow time. Like that. Gonna run away so I can heal. This dog has a hold of me. If Preston would be so kind to finish him off for us, that'd be great. I'd really rather not use all my stim packs right now. He looks like he's just going to shoot the balcony in front of him, which is perfect. I would expect nothing less. And you can see he's using stem packs too. Enemies use items now, which can be difficult. He also has a really good armor set, which I want. Hey, up here, on the I've got a group of settlers inside. The it's not the armor set I thought he had, actually. Interesting helmet. I like your face paint. Uh, you'll see this sometimes too. Some of the new masks, um, if they lose body parts, they'll just kind of stay like they're attached to their head. But uh, yeah, I don't mind it. It's quirky. I really like these shields. I find them very interesting. They're not super useful outdoors. But if I get any like inside here in these little hallways, that can be a real problem. But fortunately, I did level up, so I got full health. And we should go with heart point. I'm going to go medic pretty early on, just so we can increase the uh, effectiveness of stim packs. And we'll see if I picked up any better apparel. That takes the place of my hat, though. And that takes the spot of everything. Uh, we'll just wear that for now, it's fine. Uh, but I did get... I always want a shotgun on four. And I also got my laser musket, which has infinite ammo. On the trade-off that it's an extremely loud weapon and will attract anything nearby. And obviously, if you miss a shot, you have to crank it. And it's kind of a punishment in and of itself, but... Let's head into the museum and get started. Oh, that didn't kill him. Extremely unfortunate. Thought for sure it would. Something killed him. Must have impressed him. Oh, we'll get that guy later. I don't want to sit here all day. Off 
full shot. That was just terrible. That was better. And I can loot that tiny chunk of brain. Perfect. If you've never played this game before and you don't know how it goes, you just pick a word. It tells you how many letters are in the correct positions here, so out of these five letters, one of them is correct. If you ever get stuck, you can look for brackets like this. If two of them face each other, then it makes like a line of code, and it will either get a dud removed or tries reset. Uh, I usually save those until I'm down to one try so I can get a reset, but comes has one, so I usually look for anything that ends with an S. So that can't be right because that would have three in common with comes, and it's only supposed to be one. And that would have two, that would have two, that would have two. That doesn't have any in common with gurps, which I don't think is a real word. Move through. Okay. Easy. They weren't even moving. Oh, that got both. Awesome. Decent. You'll be fine, quick Ryan. Keep missing. Oh, I'm terrible. Thank you, dog. You make those shield enemies much more bearable. And now we can be pressed into the crew right after I pick up my magazine. Bingo. Which gives me an Atomic Command holo tape. It's a little mini game we can play in our Pip Boy. Man, I don't know who you are, but your time is impeccable. Preston Garvey, Commonwealth Minutemen. Maybe. Minutemen? So now I'm traveling backward in time. Protect the people at a minute's notice. That was the idea. So I joined up, wanted to make a difference. And I did, but things uh, fell man. apart. Now it looks like I'm the last Minuteman left standing. Who are these people? Just folks looking for a new home, a fresh start. I've been with them since Quincy. Lexington looked good for a while, but the ghouls drove us out of there. A month ago, there were 20 of them. Yesterday, there were eight. Now we're five. It's just me, the Longs, Marcy and June. That's all Mama Murphy on the couch. And this here is Sturgis. Hey. Hey. Sorry. Sounds really rough. God damn it. Thanks. It's good to meet someone who really cares. Anyway, we figured Concord would be a safe place to settle. Those raiders uh, proved man. us wrong. But, well, we do have one idea. Better be a good one. Sturgis, tell her. There's a crashed vertebrate up on the roof. Old school. Pre-war. You might have seen it. Well, looks like one of its passengers left behind a seriously sweet goodie. We're talking a full suit of cherry T-45 power armor. Military issue. That's some serious protection. Oh, it gets better. Get the suit. You can rip the minigun right off the vertibird. Do that, and those raiders get an express ticket to hell. You dig? And I can use the minigun like a rifle. Don't see why not. It'll have a manual trigger. 
Just aiming at the bad guys and do the old spray and pray. Now, as for the armor, it's out of juice. Probably has been for a hundred years. It can be powered up again. But we're a bit stuck. So what's the solution? What you'll need is an old pre-war FC. A standardized fusion core. Your high-grade, long-term nuclear battery used by the military and some companies way back when. And we know right where to find you. But we can't get to the damn thing. It's down in the basement. Locked behind a security gate. Look, I fix stuff. I tinker. Bypassing security ain't exactly my forte. You could give it a shot. Actually, I already grabbed the fusion core. We're set. Well, all right. Maybe our luck's finally turning around. Once you jack the core into the power armor and grab that minigun, those raiders will know they picked the wrong fight. Good luck. Thanks, Preston. Really cozy enough to Mama Murphy there, dog. We got my power armor stuff here. Careful. Grab our perception bobblehead. If you are unaware, our dog will be named Dog forever until we talk to Mama Murphy. Er, yeah, until we talk to Mama Murphy. Meat. And she dog says the name dog meat right there. So now he's named dog meat. Personal log. United States Army Staff Sergeant Michael Daly. This past Saturday, October 23rd, while en route to West Stockbridge, a vertebrate crashed into the roof of this museum. The cause? EMP following nuclear detonation. Several, in fact. From the intel I've gathered, this was a global Day event. After that, Flaherty and Kanawa were shot by some scared, desperate survivors. Somebody up here! You see that? Yeah, you see that. Why don't you get down here? Show me that fan that you got on the boat. Not a lot of people can get past me. Come on, I got places to be. So another mod we use we should talk about is called Bastion. You can see we have our little uh Power armor health indicator on the left hand side there, you can see my helmet, my armor green, my chest is red, and the rest doesn't exist. So any bullets or strikes that hit the green spots, I will not take any damage until that armor is broken. And the same applies for enemies as well. So if I have a full set of armor, I'm essentially invincible until one of those pieces gets broken. But the same applies to enemies as well, so you got to be really careful when you see enemies in power armor. Mainly interested in a guy named Gristle because he has a key that I want. I think he's one of these guys here. There you are. So that Corvega storage key, we'll use that later. If you don't know where it goes, I'll show you where. I don't want the armor to. I think there's still somebody here though. Yeah, the Concord of Hostels, so there's still somebody alive around here. 
If you see black spots on the body like that, that's from a CBBE issue, and I don't want to fix it. So ignore it like I do. You'll be alright. Oh no. Where is this guy? I'm guessing it's somebody with a blown off limb or something that's hiding somewhere. Because I am still in a hidden state. Oh. Did we just go inside? Yeah, he's hiding on the balcony. Oh, that's... That's Preston. Oh, hey. I kind of forgot he popped out there. I thought the raider went inside and came out. Because you can't go out that door. There's just nothing up there. Hi. That was a pretty amazing display. I'm just glad you were on our side. You guys gonna be okay now? Yeah, for a while anyway. We can at least move someplace safer. Listen, when we first met, you asked about the Minutemen. One thing you should know about us, we help out our friends. So here, for everything you've done, thank you. What happens now? For the longest time, Mama Murphy's had a vision of a place called Sanctuary. Some old neighborhood, but one we can make new again. Why don't you come with me? I could really use your help. I'll think about it. Before you leave, kid, a word about the journey you're about to start on. Because I've seen your destiny, and I know your pain. Okay, I'm listening. You're a woman out of time, out of hope. All is not lost. I can feel your son's energy. He's alive. I'm listening. Look, kid, I know how I sound. The sight, it's weird. And it ain't always clear. But your son's out there. And even I don't need the sight to tell you where you should start looking. The great green jewel of the Commonwealth. Diamond City, the biggest settlement around. You've told me nothing. It's all just guesswork. Look, kid, I'm tired now. Maybe you'll bring me some chems later. The site will paint a clearer picture. Oh, Mama Murphy, we talked about this. That junk, it's gonna kill you. Oh, shush, Preston, we're all gonna die eventually. We're gonna need the site. And our new friend here, well, she's going to need it, too. Well, let's get going. Sanctuary awaits. All right, folks. Thanks to our friend here, it's safe to move out. We're heading for that place Mama Murphy knows about. Sanctuary. It's not far. She knows about it? You mean she had one of her visions while she was stoned out of her gourd? And now you want us to just head out on another wild goose chase based on no better plan than Mama Murphy saw it? it can oh, hold turn on, out hold on. Worse than Everybody just take it easy. We're all in this together, right? So, Marcy, you got a better idea of what we should do next? Anybody? Well, then, sanctuary it is. Let's just hope it lives up to its name. Come on, Can you tell him, Sturgis? Oh, okay. So we could follow them back, and Preston has a couple comments about the history of Boston while we're walking up there, but I am going to make my way down to Starlight Drive instead, so we can start some settlements, kind of do that alongside the main quest stuff. But I do want to try to make this playthrough a little bit more linear than the last one, because um, I tend to pick up 50 quests, do half of one, and then wait 15 hours and then do the other half of it, and I kind of want to try to stay a little bit more focused this time. We'll see how it goes. It doesn't really fit my usual play style, but uh, maybe we can make it work. It's always just so much to do. I get too excited. I 
And I know a lot of people hate these HUD overlays. I really enjoy them, but I'm actually not going to wear this one for much longer. I'm probably going to leave it down in Starlight here. But I think a lot of people get this first one and see how restrictive it is. I like that it makes you feel like you're in a walking tank, but um, a lot of people don't. That's fine. But the other helmets are a bit more open as you get like better and better armor. And this bomb, I'm kind of glad to see here. Because it can spawn in a few different places. This one's the most obvious spot, so I'm always happy when it's there. So I know I can get rid of it early. I seem to be over encumbered. That's right. We don't need to go far. So I need to pick this lock and activate the workbench, but I can't yet while there's enemies here. Nice. As it will tell you if you try. So I need the mole rats to come out so I can kill them, and then this settlement can be mine. Oh my god. Oh my god. There we go. There, I can't run. Or dog meat, you can go get it. You know, that'd be fine. There we go. I think that's all of them. We can dump our stuff and actually get our walk speed back. As always, we have Workshop Plus, so we can fly around in Workshop mode. I'm just going to dump some stuff really quickly. Uh, one thing I do want to do right off the bat, though, is get rid of these rad barrels so that I don't get poisoned to death. Yo, I think that's all of them. Then we need to build a generator. Just put this anywhere. And we need a recruitment beacon. So on older versions of this list, there were two different beacons. There was this radio recruitment beacon, and there was a smart beacon right to the left of it. And a lot of people didn't know the difference. They would build the smart beacon, and it wouldn't trigger the Sim Settlements guy to come. So now you can't build that smart recruitment beacon until the first Sim Settlements 2 quest is done. You are welcome. But this usually takes a little bit of time for him to show up, and he should come through those gates down there. There's, every time I built here, I'm pretty sure he spawns over that way and walks up. Uh, I guess we'll see. There's also a random encounter that always happens under this bridge. Can't tell which one that is, but there's definitely a guy standing there, but we'll check it out in a little bit. This door always has a bomb on the other side. Oh, we also have uh, no companion collision, so dog won't get in your way anymore. We can just walk right through him. Which is very nice. It's a relatively new mod, surprisingly. Definitely worth it. So actually, let's wait until daytime so that we can see a little bit better. And the stranger will definitely be here by the time we're done waiting. Hey! Hello there! 
there. There he is. If I'm not mistaken, you're the gal I've been looking for. You uh, hear my broadcast? <laughs> you're sharp. Yeah, I heard your broadcast. Sounded as if you were starting some kind of settlement. Is that about the right of it? You looking for a new place to settle? Not me, no. But I have something that might help you with those that are. Here, catch. It's called an ASAM sensor. If you're going to be building settlements, these things are what you'll want to use. Yeah? Why is that? Mm, I think a demonstration is in order. Place that ASAM down on the ground somewhere. Go ahead. Any old spot will do. Well, let's build a residential plot. Put it right there. Congratulations! You've made the smart move of choosing Rupke brand ASAM sensors for your city planning needs. Unlike other less reliable multi-purpose sensors, Rupke brand ASAM sensors offer the level of versatility and connectability that you deserve. Rupke brand ASAM sensors, America's number one sensor solution. Nicely done. Don't mind the ASAM. It's just scanning the area for materials. I did recently adjust the volumes for these storm sounds and the voices, but that'll be in the next update. But you can always do that in the um, persistent volume sliders MCM, and the storm effects are in the vanilla audio next settings. Part, I'm going to pretend to be a settler. Just come to work for you. So just play along, all right? <clears throat> Boy, I sure am glad I found this settlement to live in. But oh no, there are no homes available. And I don't know how to build one myself. I guess I'll just have to rely on whoever runs this place to build a home for me. I got a better idea. Do it yourself. Well, I'm more than willing. But like most wastelanders, I have no idea how. But wait, what is this? Well, it's an ASAM! Just the thing I need! What do you need it for? That is a great question. You see, with an ASAM, there's no barrier for entry when it comes to building something. All I'd need to do is follow the step-by-step -step instructions provided by the ASAM. Here, let me show you. Once you've placed down a sensor, your role in the construction is pretty much done. So fun fact, this first residential plot will always build the same exact plot no matter what. It's kind of a throwback for King Gath himself who makes some settlements. Well, him and his whole dev team. But uh, this is actually the first little home that he built for a plot. In the settlement can claim the area and start building for themselves. that the ASAM provides are so easy to understand, even a savage could do it with no problem. Alright, just one more nail, and finished. A man's home is his castle. And no one understands that better than Rocco. Our ASAM sensor technology offers citizens unrivaled freedom of DIY home design. Built using locally sourced materials and designed via our patented dynamic easy build blueprint software. With Rocco brand ASAM sensors, everyone can have a roof over their head. After all, a warm and dry citizen is a productive citizen. And there you have it. A fully built home. Ready for habitation by some lucky wastelander. And you barely had to lift a finger. Not too shabby, huh? So now that you've seen what they can do, what do you think? Are ASAM sensors something you might be interested in? Yeah, they seem pretty awesome. What's the catch? I saw that coming, did you? You're right. There is a catch.
Unfortunately, right now I only have the one sensor on me. However, I can provide you with more. And once you have more, I can show you even more stuff you can build with them. Homes are just the start. But first, I'm gonna have to ask for a little task done in return. Tell me about the job. All right, here it is. I've got me a workshop in a town called Concord. Nice enough place, fairly quiet. Or at least it was. But just recently, I returned from a trade run to find the entire town overrun by raiders. And now I can't get near my workshop. A small group I could deal with, but there's too many for me to take on alone. So I'm gonna need someone to help take them out. So there it is. That's the job. You help me get rid of these raiders, I'll give you more ASAPs. And show you how to build even more stuff with them. There's no need to worry. I already took care of those raiders. You did? Huh. I need to go check this out for myself. Not that I don't believe you, but, you know, I'll meet you outside of Concord Hardware. Then we can discuss your payment. So there is one more setting that I like that I know a lot of people don't, so I left it off. But I'm going to turn it on to myself. But if you go into Workshop Plus, there is the options and clear weather and workshop mode. I like to leave it on, but a lot of people were thinking it was a bug because they're silly. So when you enter workshop mode, you get clear weather. And I think that's much better to build in. There's also... If you don't like the skeletons or like these mole rat corpses and stuff, you can see I can't do anything with them. But if I press the insert key, you'll see in the top left, it says extra object selection enabled, and now I can get rid of that stuff. This will also let you get rid of things that you shouldn't get rid of, like these four pieces. Would not recommend doing that. If you do scrap something by accident, you can press Control Z to undo your last action. But I would recommend scrapping the stuff that you really want to get rid of with this like these corpses and stuff, and then immediately turn it back off by pressing insert again, which you'll see again in the top left says extra object selection disabled. So let's head on back to Concord. Usually a bloat fly around here somewhere, I think. And a rad roach. Oh, see the stranger running over there. Taking the long way. Oh, rad stags are now friendly, so they won't run away from you or be marked as hostile anymore, which is nice. I also have one extra mod for myself that I made here. It's not included in the list that I forgot to mention earlier, but it it's just a, a quick and easy mod to disable all radios by default. So I won't walk into a place and get music blasting in my ear and have copyright strikes on my videos. So The only thing I've added that's not in the list. Everything else is as is. So anything you see here, you can do. Now we just have to wait for the stranger. He shouldn't take too long. But fun fact while we're here, just a little personal note. This pipe here is how I found out about the existence of pre-combines. Because when I started modding this game, this pipe in itself would flicker in and out of existence, depending on where I was standing, and I did not understand it. And that was my first foray into learning about pre-combines and how they work, and it was a nightmare. And it still is sometimes. But anyway, Stranger's here. Let's talk to him. Hey. Oh, hey. I'll be honest, when you said you'd already taken care of the Raiders, I had my doubts. But you were speaking the truth. All right. You held up your side of the bargain. The Raiders have been dealt with. Now it's my turn to deliver. If you'd just like to follow me, we'll get you your ASAPs. Welcome to my workshop. Or at least what's left of Raiders in Smash. Some air fresheners, a new coat of paint, and it'll all be good as new. Despite the mess they made, it doesn't look like they took anything important. Most of my equipment is still here. Including your reward. Here, one whole box of ASAMs to do with as you see fit. You earned them. Yay. Happy to help. That's not all. If you remember, I also promised to show you more things you could build with ASAM sensors. I'll meet you back at your settlement. Don't keep me waiting long now. So if you want to troll around here a little bit, there are a ton of these boxes of ASAM sensors. Now that's if 
you want to use like some sideman stuff, but you don't want to follow this quest line right away. So each box, uh, I think, is worth 20 sensors. So you're kind of free to go build with them all you want for a little while. And there's also crafting recipes for them later, so you can always make your own. But he wants us to meet him back at Starlight, so we'll head back down that way. And then we'll probably head up the Sanctuary to meet up with Preston and those guys again. That's another reason I don't like doing it in Sanctuary, is if you do Sturgis's quest, he has you build a bunch of beds and plant food and all that kind of stuff. And that messes with this next Sim Settlements quest. Because uh, we need settlers to be assigned to plots, but if they're already assigned a bed and food up there, then they won't unassign themselves and assign them onto plots. So it's just better not to do... It's better not to do this next quest after doing Sturgis's quest, unless you already know that. Or just do it somewhere that's not Sanctuary. Because uh, Starlight here only has one bed by default, and we can go scrap it real quick to make sure it's not a problem. We'll just go do right now. It is way up here. The skeleton arm, which we also scrap with our extra object selection. Again, I know you can scrap all this stuff. I would very strongly recommend you not do that. But the choice is yours. You are free to break the game however you see fit. It is yours to do with as you please. In the meantime, I'll just scrap other stuff while I'm waiting for the stranger to show up. Again, we'll only take a minute. It's right down the road. This stuff will come back anyway because I plan on putting a city plan here. And... Uh, what that does is it has to revert the settlement back to a vanilla state, which is called a scrap profile. And then it'll start building from there. So basically free resources, yay! Just a corpse. I know he comes from over there. I guess he's not here anymore. He's gonna wait. What is he stuck up? Oh, he's on the roof. Of course he is. Why wouldn't he be? Hi. Hi. All right, time to show you what else ASAMs can do. Now, generally speaking, people need a roof over their head, food in their bellies, and a place to be working. We already built a place someone could live. So if you're ready, let's move on to those other two things. Okay. Show me. All right. Place down a sensor again. But this time, we'll use one configured for food production. You got it. Agricultural plot, here we go. And again, I don't really care where it's going, because I'm going to put a city plan, so right here is fine. And I see another skeleton. Oh, hey. I'm glad you got off the roof. Go build. Okay, I'm gonna take on the role of a settler again. Don't worry, I won't subject you to my bad theatrics this time. I just want to show you how easy this is. Now, I can't say I've got much of a green thumb, but thanks to the A Sam, that don't really matter. Settlers where to dig, what to plant, when to harvest. Takes out all the guesswork. No fuss, no muss. Well, maybe a little bit of muss. I mean, I am getting covered in dirt. But how's that different to any other day in the Commonwealth? Okay, almost done.
Sometimes these will take a second to trigger, so just wait. It'll talk to you yes. in a minute. There you go. Days of citizens complaining over those ever-increasing grocery store prices. Thanks to Rutger Brand ASAM sensors. Never has it been easier for citizens to grow their own mouth-watering produce. It's so simple, even the wife and kids will want to get their hands dirty. For the finest in homegrown food, look to Rutger Brand ASAM sensors. And there we have it. A fine plot of land ready for cultivation. This from the guy who wants underwater to cactus. <laughs> what next? Right. Let's move on. All right. We've built a home, a farm. Next thing is a place to work. You know, somewhere folks can perform a little industry. Gather scrap or do a bit of scaven. That kind of thing. Go ahead. Put down an ASAM that's programmed for that. You got it. Industry coming right up. We'll just tack this one. Oh, so it actually won't snap unless you get rid of this piece here. There we go. Yes, build my pretty build. Okay, time for some industrial action. I'm on it. I can see that bloat fly. I left. Pre-selected a storage unit to build. That'll be useful. Now any old fool can gather a pile of junk. If you want settlements to grow, you need folks to gather useful building materials. A storage unit will encourage people to do that. Wood, steel, maybe even a little asbestos to help keep warm. And don't be surprised if in time people start gathering even more useful stuff. You got a pull through your head there, buddy. That's true now. I had it tight. And we're done. Noise. Again, we'll just wait for that ACM to talk to us. Times are tough. There's no bones about it. Even useful people are starting to feel the pinch. But you can rely on Rocco to provide fulfilling employment alternatives. With just one handy dandy Rocco brand ASAM sensor, citizens need never fear unemployment again. Able to legally gather and store useful materials, your citizens will wonder how they ever did without a Rocco industrial unit. Just one more in the long line of technological marvels brought to you by Rocco brand ASAM sensors. Well, there we are. All basic necessities covered. Although folks won't be happy with the bare essentials forever. Eventually they will want more. Now it's up to you what type of ASAMs you put down. But do try and keep in mind what folks in your sentiments will be needing. Excuse me, hello. Uh, don't shoot now, I don't mean no harm. I uh, hope you don't mind the intrusion. I couldn't help but notice all the commotion. What are you two youngins up to here? That is, if you don't mind me asking. Fixing up these buildings, are you? Yeah. Something like that. Actually, we just finished building these. Foundations, walls, everything. Is that so? Built them by yourself, did you? Well, you two looking to settle down here, or...? This settlement belongs to my friend here, not me. I was just demonstrating some construction techniques using this ASAM sensor. Construction techniques? Using that gadget there? <laughs> Sounds like Brahmin dung to me. Are you telling me you made all this using that gizmo? That's right. We're rebuilding. <laughs> you say that as if building stuff is easy. Hey, here's a suggestion. Why not offer the old timer residence here? Let him experience the benefits of sensors firsthand. 
That is, if you'd be interested in staying here. I'll admit, seeing you two build with those doodads did pique my curiosity. Huh. And it might be nice to settle down somewhere for a while. It is getting dangerous out there, especially for a scav past his prime. But, uh, would an old man like me really be welcome here? That's your choice. I'm not gonna force you to stay. Okay then, you got yourself a deal. Old Paul is at your service. Now if uh, you'd excuse me a second, I uh, want to check out this here sensor doohickey. How about that? Your ice sands have already attracted their first resident. With that, I'd say our exchange of services is complete. Enjoy your ace sands. I'm sure you'll put them to good use. Now if you'll excuse me, I gotta get back to the hardware store. Got a lot of important work to begin on with. What kind of work? I've got some family matters I need to take care of. Some personal stuff. I'm sure you understand. It was good working with you. Yeah, you too. I should get going. Oh, and good luck with your settlement. Hey, where's that ASAM fella going? I wanted to ask him a few questions. Well, if something's wrong, maybe I can help. Uh, maybe you could. You're the head honcho around this place, right? Well, I've got a request to make. You see, I noticed that there's a whole bunch of new people around here, so I'm thinking it might be best to put down a few more of these here sensor thingamabobs. You know, to make sure everybody's got a home, a place to work, and not to mention enough food. That's a good idea. Well, I've been known to have a decent idea now and again. These ASAM things seem very impressive, but we can only make use of them if you place them down for us. So this might seem a little weird or nitpicky, but one thing I noticed during that cutscene is my sun update timer is a little off, which is why those are, if you look at like the sunspots, they're moving very kind of forcefully. That's because our update timer is too high or too low, depending on how you want to look at it. So I'm going to have to bump that up later. But anyway, uh, this quest I know a lot of people struggle with for the reasons I mentioned earlier about Sanctuary. It should go extremely smoothly here. I haven't had any problems with it in a really long time. Not since like some of the initial releases of some settlements to chapter one. But we just need to build a bunch of plots. We'll just stick them all together. I usually do three houses, two farms, and industrial to get started. And then we'll build a couple. Again, doesn't matter where these go. I don't plan on keeping anything as is. We're just waiting for the step that says to go greet the newcomers. And then we can carry on. We do have challenges now. I forgot to talk about that. But if you open your Pip Boy, and in the data tab we have our affinity tab, which obviously only shows the companions we've currently met, and challenges, which give you tiny little bonuses for things. We just completed one called Crafty. We had to scrap 120 items to get it, and it should add a new. Oh no, that's from a, a different mod that we have. It usually gives a little effect or perk or something. I'm not sure which one that gives. I would have to go look it up. But there's a lot of little things you can do here. So it's pretty cool uh, if you keep track of that. They are not retroactive. So, for example, if I had already found, like, Vault 75, it wouldn't trigger. I would have to go back to Vault 75. And once I'm in the location, then it'll mark as complete.
So we just got that greet the newcomers prompt. I don't know why they're all the way up there, but let's go say hi. Hey there. Um, hey. Are you the one who put out the radio message? Is this your settlement? It's very nice. We had to leave our home. Everyone was getting sick. So, if you're looking for people and it's no trouble, well, we'd like to live here. No trouble at all. Oh, thank you. Don't worry. We're willing to work. Just let us know where you want us. You got it. So, with that... As you can see, we have to build more jobs and more houses. Can't be good for the sensor. But it won't work right. That's no reason to go beating the living daylights out of it. Well, how do I make it do what I want? I wish I could tell you, but I really when we hear this fight break out, that then means the next know, stage of the quest is ready work. to go. So we can go investigate. Oh, oh, thank goodness you're here. Maybe you can talk some sense into the young lady. I could have a chat with her. It's this sensor thing. I want to build a store, you know, somewhere I could sell stuff, but it won't work. A store? I don't think the sensors can build those. Can they? Who knows? Hmm. You know who would know? That ASAM fella. Maybe you should go find him. Ask him what else these sensor flibbity gibbets can do. I'll go see him immediately. Oh, well, that's great. In the meantime, I'll get the new arrival settled. And hopefully prevent more property damage. Good luck. Thanks, Paul. Look at this place all different. Well, let's go talk to the ASAM stranger. But that'll have to wait until next episode, I'm afraid, because we are running a bit long here. So, thank you for watching. I know this was probably a little bit boring, but the beginning of a new game always is. Things will get exciting, I promise, especially once we get into the later some settlement stuff and more of the modded content. But I hope you join me for the next one. And uh, again, thanks for stopping by and I will see you next time.